Welcome to Glossika intro series. In this series, we will talk about the basics of languages. And in today's video, we will talk about the Persian language. Persian alphabet. The Persian alphabet is an Arabic based script. Majority of the letters are the same as Arabic alphabet. But Persian has a few more letters that are not available in the standard Arabic alphabet. Persian is an Indo-European language, which means it shares many similarities with European languages. Once you get past the Arabic-based alphabet, you will see many similarities with European languages. Literary and Colloquial Persian Literary Persian is slightly different from the colloquial or spoken Persian, but the differences are not significant and can be learned very quickly. But since this is an intro video, we will only talk about the colloquial or spoken Persian. Persian and Arabic numbers are also very similar, except for the numbers 4, 5, and 6. Although Persian and Arabic share a very similar alphabet, not all the letters are pronounced the same. For example, these four letters all have a different sound in Arabic, while in Persian they are all pronounced the same. These three letters are also pronounced differently in Arabic, but they all sound the same in Persian. Vowels Persian language has six vowels, three long vowels and three short vowels. The long vowels are these. And these are the short vowels in Persian. The short vowels are attached to other letters and cannot appear alone. For example, most of the time, the short vowels are not written in Persian, thus making it hard for foreigners to read the words correctly. That's why it's important to pay close attention to the short vowels when you learn a new word. Plural Plural is very simple in Persian. By simply adding ha at the end of a word, you can make the word plural. For example, And like English, when you say two cats in Persian, you don't have to make the word cat plural. Comparative and superlative. By simply adding tar at the end of the word, we make the adjective into comparative. And by adding tarin at the end of the word, we make the adjective into superlative. For example, Pronouns. These are the subject pronouns in Persian. When we use a subject pronoun, we should also use a personal ending for that pronoun. And each pronoun has a unique personal ending. For example, These are the possessive endings in Persian language. They are attached to the end of a noun to show possession. For example, Ezafe. In Persian, Ezafe is used for many different purposes. We talk about two main purposes here. The first one is to indicate possession. When you say Ahmad's book, we say kitab Ahmad. The short vowel A indicates the book belongs to Ahmad. So the literal translation would be the book of Ahmad. Another example, Pedare Ahmad, the father of Ahmad or Ahmad's father. And if the last letter was a vowel, we add Ye instead of A. For example, Dustaye Ahmad, the friends of Ahmad. The izafe is also used to connect a noun to an adjective. For example, Kuhe Bolan, high mountain. Abe Sar, cold water. Literary Persian, Ast and Nist are used to say is and is not. But in the colloquial Persian, the Ast has been shortened to E or Ye after vowels. For example, Va 
verbs. In Persian language, the infinitives end with tan or dan. And there are two stems in Persian, the infinitive stem and the present stem. The infinitive stem, also called the past stem, is made simply by removing the an from the infinitive. But the present stem is a bit more different. Since almost all the present stems are different, it is wise to memorize each word separately. Compound verbs. There are many compound verbs in Persian language. The compound verbs are made from a noun plus a verb. For example, the verb to ring, zang zadan. Zang means bell, zadan means to hit. So, to hit the bell means to ring. Another example, kar kardan. Kar means work, kardan means to do. To do work means to work. And the most common way to create a compound verb is a noun plus kardan, which means to do. For example, when conjugating the compound verbs, remember to change only the second part of the verb. And the first part doesn't change. Past tense. Conjugating the verbs in a past tense is very easy. First, get the past verb stem and then add the correct personal ending. The personal endings are very similar to the subject pronoun personal ending, with the exception of the third person. For example, Present tense. Present tense is formed by taking the present stem, then adding the prefix me, and then conjugating it. As we mentioned earlier, the present stem must be studied separately since the present stem for each verb may be different and cannot be predicted. For example, In the spoken Persian, for the present tense, certain commonly used verbs are pronounced in a shortened form. For example, the verb raftan, to go, is shortened to only its very first letter, r. Then, just like any other present tense, we add the prefix mi in the beginning and adding the personal ending to the end. Some more examples. If we add the prefix me to a past conjugated verb, we will get the past continuous tense. For example, negating the verbs. We can negate the present tense by simply adding ne in the beginning. For example, and we can negate the past tense by adding na in the beginning. For example, When you learn Persian, one word you might see very often is a postposition draw. The postposition draw has two functions. One, it shows that the noun is a direct object of the sentence, and second, it makes the noun identifiable and known, just like the English definite article the. For example, but the postposition draw cannot be used with a noun alone, like the English definite article the, and must be used with a verb and a subject. So, Kitabro Khundam means I read the book. Kitabro does not mean the book and is grammatically wrong because it's not a complete sentence. So, although postposition draw can work as a definite article, it should be used with a sentence and cannot be used alone. For example, Prepositions. These are some very useful prepositions in Persian.
Thank you for watching the video and subscribe to our Glossika channel to see more videos like this. Also, please tell us in the comment section what language do you want to see next.